this this one okay thank you kartik good nabit everybody i hope uh, you can hear me i'm uh, milind brahme instructor for the german one course on it so um sorry but i am getting an echo of what i whatever i said but to me the audio is very clear no echo no disturbance Okay. How many are the people logged in? Or people have logged in? Yes. Sir. Okay. So you can start answering the question now. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Once again, Guten Abend. I hope you can hear me clearly. Uh, this is the first live session for the German one course this semester. I hope that all of you who are doing the German course are enjoying the course, are uh, liking the experience of learning German, and uh, I hope to do at least one or two more live sessions before our um, course closes in a couple of weeks' time. So um, I will start today's session by. Um, Many of you have actually filled in questions here in the Google Sheet that was shared from the NPTEL office. So I will quickly go through the questions and answer them first, and then we can also have responses or questions and responses through live chat if it is possible. Right now, I am uh, unable to see who all are logged in, how many how many people are logged into the session, and who all are there. I am not able to see that right now. So I am just going to. um i hope you can see the screen um can you uh, no, uh yeah so um i'm reading the questions serially the first question is need some more lecture on saying time in german um which means um how to tell time is what i guess uh, this means actually there is a <clears throat> yeah there is one request uh, kartik can you hear me so the request is uh, whether this uh, google sheet which is open which with whether that can be shared with the participants right right okay so okay I'll, fine then i will just read the questions and i, I will try to try to answer them as best i can yeah so the first question as i said was needs some more lecture on saying time in german that means i suppose this is how to ask and tell time um, see actually the thing is that in the german one course uh, we have covered this quite comprehensively and uh, in fact it is always better 
in the first instance when we are learning a language a new language it is better, better to stick to a standard mode you know and so uh, most of the not most i think all of the standard modes of telling time in german we have covered in the relevant lecture so i would suggest uh, you go back and check that lecture where we have done how to tell time if there are specific things that you have not understood then please uh, send it to the forum and we will respond to that uh, then the next question the set of three questions uh, first is kindly elaborate on the kind of final test that we will face in december the type of questions the marking scheme tips for the exam where can i find some sample tests etc so that is very simple actually the final test will be modeled on the assignments that you are you are being given so if you have been solving the assignments regularly then you know what are the kind of questions that we can ask you have to also understand this is an online exam simultaneously being taken by more than 1000 to 1000 students so <clears throat> um, all of them will be uh, objective type there will, there will be one small descriptive type of question in which you will have to write uh, a small text uh such as either a 50 word email or an sms message or uh, a small letter or something like that on a very simple topic um so that is the only question in which there will be some uh thing that you have to write as such and this and sentences that you have to write, you have to write otherwise most of the questions will follow the same pattern as you have come across in the assignments uh, there will be audio questions, there will be reading comprehension, there will be grammar questions, all these aspects will be covered in the exam. Then, um, I hope, uh, see if, if uh, anything I have not responded to, you still have doubt in your mind, please put that into the question uh, on the forum or even after I go through this list, we might have some time to actually have some live interaction. That time you can again ask those doubts. Then the next question is, please discuss the tips to identify, learn the genders of different words. For instance, a new word, how can I make an intelligent guess to identify the gender of the word? So this is very simple. And in fact, even in a couple of lectures, we have uh, pointed this out. Uh, always, in because the genders are not very logically distributed in the German language, whenever you come across a new noun, a new word in the sense, a new noun. Please learn it, not only the meaning, but also the gender and the plural. You know, in, in German, they say, uh, lernen Sie immer, lernen Sie bitte immer uh, den Artikel und den Plural. So always learn the article as well as the plural form of every new noun that you come across. Repeat it a few times, make sure it is, a, it is the way we have learned as children, you know, it is the 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 beginning of learning a foreign language some amount of rote learning i think is the best strategy and um, <clears throat> later on of course once you have a basic vocabulary of 100 200 nouns that you can even get up from your sleep and say oh yeah it is das brot bread is das brot in english saying bread is enough but in german you say das brot okay uh, yeah, so once you have that basic vocabulary, then then your mind automatically begins to identify uh, patterns. And then you know, for example, that all nouns that end in H-E-I-T or K-E-I-T or U-N-G or even U-R, those will be feminine. Many of the nouns, most of the nouns that end in E-R, like computer, rechner, etc., could be masculine and so on and so forth. There is no, I mean, there are, well, at least 13 to 14 rules by which you make plurals and gender distinction. There are no rules actually. It is something that you have to learn and get a feel for. And that can come only when you have sufficient vocabulary in a new language. So for the A1 level and even for the A2 level, actually, please learn. Uh, the articles and plurals by heart. And you will never, if you are going to continue with German, you will never ever regret having done that because that really fixes the genders of some basic words in your mind and it never goes away. It is very useful later on 
because when you come across similar words, then you can make, as the learner has asked, then you can make an intelligent guess to identify the gender of the word. But first, you need to have those patterns recorded in your mind. And for that, you need some amount of learning by heart. Um, third question is, uh, can you explain when the different cases, nominative, accusative, and dative, are used? Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, <clears throat> You can simply say that every sentence describes an action. Uh, the, the action word is the verb. Now, when we say an action is being performed, then there is somebody who or something that performs the action. That is your subject. You know, for those who follow Hindi, will um, or even my mother tongue is Marathi. Uh, you know, in, in, in Hindi grammar, in Vyakaran, you have the you have the word karta. So the karta is that the person, the subject that does the action. That is the nominative case. The grammatical term for it is the nominative case. Then you have a term called karma, or you have the term object in English. Um, and so, for example, if I am reading a book, then I am reading. I am the subject, nominative. I am reading what? The book is the direct object which is being read. That is my accusative object. Okay. And then if I am reading you a book, if I am reading the book aloud to you, I am reading you a book, I am reading you a story, I read my son a story, for example, then, then we have the same reading going on. I am reading, nominative. I am reading a story or a book, accusative, but there is a third entity which has come in. I am reading my son or my daughter or my child or my students a book. Now, that person will be the dative or the indirect object. Also, in English, you can call it the indirect or the dative object. Um, <clears throat> so, nominative, accusative, dative. Usually, usually, it is not always like this, but usually, a nominative, the karta, the subject, uh, can be a person or a thing, either ways. Okay, so for example, the bus is traveling very fast. Now, traveling is the action that's happening. What is traveling the bus? The bus is not a person, but the bus is nominative. So nominative can be a uh, thing or person. Okay, or abstract. The idea is good. So the idea is here, the subject, which is good. OK, so <clears throat> nominative can be anything, but it's very easy to, to identify the nominative. Usually, accusative is a thing, and dative is a person. Again, this is, I'm saying, most likely. It doesn't have to be like this all the time. But the, the example that I gave you, I am reading my students a story. Then in this example, the story is a thing. And uh, who, for whom am I reading the story or to whom am I reading the story? Students are persons. So usually you will have accusative object, also called the direct object as a thing, and dative object, also called the indirect object as a person. This is usually, usually the case, not always. OK, but um, it can be a useful clue to identify the accusative and dative in several cases. I hope that is clear. If uh, I think the you, if you go back to the lecture in which we, had, we have dealt with uh, the accusative case and the dative case, you will come across similar explanations again. And um, also, <clears throat> I think our textbook, Netzwerk Deutsch, does mention that usually accusative is a thing and dative is a person, but it doesn't have to be like that all the time. Anyway, moving on to the next question uh, on where to take the German A1 proficiency exam. Uh, that I think um, will be clarified by the NPTEL team. Uh, I suppose you mean the NPTEL exam, because if you want to take uh, the exam which is conducted by the Goethe Institute, or as the Goethe Institute is known in India, the Max Müller Bhavan. 
if you want to take their exam then of course you will have to contact them and find out whether they, they have they also have i think off campus exams so that uh, you need not be in one of the cities which has a goethe institute to take their exam but that you have to clarify from them and otherwise the the a1 exam that is going to happen for the nptel course i'm sure the nptel team will let you know uh, at the correct time and well in time where the center is etc then <clears throat> again the same question uh, next question is about the pattern of the end semester examination for german one i think i have answered the question that if you have been doing your assignments regularly then you can be sure that the exam will follow similar type of questions audios where you have to choose right or wrong or you have to choose the correct answer from among several answers uh, mcq type of questions you will have grammar like what you have been doing till now fill in the blanks and then you will have a small field in which you write one word uh, fill in the blank etc um, i answered this earlier also i said one thing that we have not had in the assignments which you will have in the final exam will be to um, write a small text i mean by small text i mean really small maximum 100 words or so okay so um, like a small paragraph describing yourself or uh, writing a small request to somebody saying i cannot come tomorrow or do you want to go to the movie tomorrow emergency in skino gain or wills to um, in uh, wills to jog in gain or uh, wills to uh, some theater gain that kind of a thing so small messages or a very small email uh, and a description of something like describing yourself or a, a picture shown to you or something like that that we will make sure that it will it is well within the vocabulary that that we are that we have learned in our course and uh, we make sure that you should be if you have done the course and the assignments uh, well enough then you should be you should find it very simple it's not difficult that's the only question kind of question that we don't have in uh, our assignments um because it involves manual correction and uh, it is it will be there in the end semester exam so you you need to practice uh, what it means is you need to look at small small emails that are there in the textbook in the workbook try and write a small email to somebody and check its correctness or simply you know practice what is given in the workbook even that should be sufficient okay yeah um separate session for separable verbs so sorry next question is uh repeat shortly prepositions with their meanings um i think this is this cannot be done shortly i'm sorry but it cannot be done shortly um prepositions by themselves are a big topic in german grammar and uh, prepositions with meanings i think we have to uh, we have to understand that prepositions need not have one to one meanings between languages so when we say von in german uh, it can mean of it can mean from in uh, english when we say an in german it can mean at it can mean to ich schreibe einen brief i write a letter an minor l turn to my parents you know so it can mean at to uh, on this particular day on am sonntag on sunday etc so uh, we have to understand that the prepositions do not have one to one corresponding meanings between languages each language has its own sense of the meanings of prepositions that is why in the lectures uh, when we did prepositions Uh, in the class that time we have used certain visual clues as to what prepositions could mean i think you go back to those lectures have a look at those visual clues and um, later on if it is um, if you after going through the lectures which deal with prepositions with the dative prepositions with the accusative and the so called wechsel prepositionen which means 
uh, prepositions that can take either the dative or the accusative. Once you have gone through that again, if you have any specific doubts, you can come back to us because in a live session of an hour or so, I'm afraid it is not possible to repeat the topic of prepositions uh, right now. But uh, please go back to the lectures where the prepositions are have been um, have been taught, and uh, it will help if you can identify what exactly it is that you do not understand. Okay. I, unfortunately, I, I cannot see the names of people who have asked these questions. So I hope you will, if you're listening into this program or watching this program, you will know that uh, and when I am addressing your question. Okay, I'm just going serially through the list <clears throat> that is here. So that is about prepositions. Then um, there is a question about there are verbs that bring dative form with it. Um, how to know? That they bring some dative form with them. So, my spiel, ich helfe meinem Vater. Here, yeah, correct. So, um, this question is about uh, about those verbs which have directly, um, which take dative objects only. In the example that we did while answering the question on nominative accusative dative, we said that I am reading a book, a book is accusative, and I am reading my students a book. Students are dative and book is accusative, but there are verbs in German uh, correctly pointed out by this by the person who asked this question, like helfen, which is to help, or danken, which is to thank, or antworten, which is to answer, etc. Et there are several verbs which actually directly go to the dative object. There is no accusative object. So if I am helping my father then my father is in the sentence in the dative case. It's the dative object. There is no accusative object. So <clears throat> again, one important point here is that these verbs are limited in number, especially at the A1 and A2 level. We don't need more than 10 to 12 max, maximum 10 to 12 dative verbs. They're called as dative verbs, dative verbin. And it is a list that we need to learn that we, I mean, for example, off the top of my mind, I can say helfen, danken, antworten, <clears throat> schaden, or um, um, yeah, right now, four of these, but on, on looking at the verbs, we understand that uh, there are 10 to 12 of them, which we should know are dative verbs. Okay, so um, that has to be learned. How can we know that? In the sense, those verbs, there is nothing else to identify them apart from the fact. So, for, for example, see, uh, when I say there is nothing to identify them, I'll give you an, I'll give you an example of how um, strange it is. So there, there is, a, there is a, a pair of verbs to ask and to answer, which should be actually, should, should reply, should, um, belong to the same category of verbs. I mean, to ask someone for something or to ask a question is fragen and to answer is antworten. So when you say, when you, when we use fragen, actually, you can have with fragen only an accusative object, no dative. So for example, in English, I say, I ask my teacher a question. Simple sentence. I ask my teacher a question or um, I Akshay is sitting here with me. I ask Akshay a question. If I take that example, then I have I ask. Uh, what do I ask a question? Accusative object. And whom? Akshay or my students or my teacher, whoever. Dative. Standard nominative accusative dative construction we have. But I can also just ask you or him or her that is also a complete sentence okay so <clears throat> with to to ask you can have uh, um, in german i cannot use the verb fragen in this manner i can use the verb fragen only to say ich frage ich frage and then it would be den lehrer as in accusative case or ich frage die lernen den as in an accusative case Okay, um, if I have to 
ask a question, I have to actually change the verb. So fragen, I can use only with accusative and antworten, on the other hand, I can use only with dative. So ich frage den Lehrer, if you can hear me clearly, ich frage den Lehrer, accusative, and ich antworte dem Lehrer, dative. So it is not easy for us to, um, I mean, it's not possible, not just not easy, it's not possible to understand why it is like this. Okay, why is it when you ask the teacher, the teacher is accusative, but when you answer the teacher, the teacher is dative in German. So, um, as I said, you will have to learn the list of dative verbs and not too many. I mean, 10 max. I mean, even now you see when I'm actively interacting with you live, off the top of my head, I could count only four. Okay, and still I'm not afraid of dative verbs in the sense I know, I know that I can handle them when I come across them. So if you have 10 dative verbs learned, I think that is more than enough. Right. Then the next question is uh, separate session of separable verbs. Um, so there is a question about separable verbs um, and irregular verbs. Um, yeah, I mean, see, separable verbs, again, there is, there is already a session in our online lectures. And I would like to know oh, in what is it in those lectures that is not clear. Okay. Otherwise, uh, it is these live sessions are, as you know, uh, we have to limit the time of the live sessions to about an hour and we can't really go beyond that. So it's difficult to handle an entire topic in a live session. So if you if you send a very specific, specific query, like for example, the query about dative verbs or the query about um, nominative versus the dative. Okay, so that is something that can be handled, but irregular verbs, now irregular verbs, I, I have uh, mentioned uh, both, I think Shashi Rekha and I have both mentioned in the lectures that the irregularity in irregular verbs in German occurs in 99% of the cases only with the conjugation of do and rzs, with the informal second person singular and with the third person singular. All the other conjugations like ish, wir, ihr, and z, as in the they or the big z, as in the up, you, formal you they follow a pattern okay and um, irregular verbs again there is there is a basic um, what what can i say um, <clears throat> there's a very basic set of irregular verbs that that we have to know by heart um, that we have learned in the very first few months of beginning to learn german and we know for example that helfen lesen essen nehmen geben so to help, to eat, etc., that these are irregular verbs and they will change their vowel, their root vowel in the two forms, do and rzs. Um, and we learn those forms. That is, that is what we can do. There are, if you go to some of the <clears throat> grammar books, you will find that there are about 14 different patterns or, yeah, probably even more. Uh, in the way the irregular verbs can actually be irregular. But it is rather than learn 14 patterns and try and apply them to each verb, I think it's better to learn 25 verbs and have them learned by heart because those are the ones that you're going to use maximum in your active usage of the language. There are so many verbs that you will not need even. Okay. Um, in your day-to-day -day communication. And that is our primary goal in an A1 and A2 course. That is the primary goal that you are competent, you're confident of dealing with day-to-day -day situations. Okay, so learn those few irregular verbs by heart. And uh, yeah, so there are lots of things. There are articles and plurals learn by heart. Uh, then as I said, a small list of dative verbs, learn them by heart. And irregular verbs also about 20 to 25 uh, should be sufficient okay um yeah this is the this is what's going on okay <clears throat> we should finish the quiet and go to yeah, yeah we will it's a long list <laughs> yeah um so the other thing about 
uh, separable verbs uh, please go through the lecture once again and uh, it would really help if you can identify what your doubt is because separable verbs how they function what the sentence structure is where does the prefix go and uh, what happens when modal verbs come in etc i think all that we have addressed in the separable verbs lecture if there are specific doubts as some aspect has not been understood properly then please raise it in the forum and definitely we will respond to that okay uh, then um, first five weeks uh, very well and which was basic after fifth week it has become very difficult to practice and some tips on online learning so we can apply whatever basic okay so the question is about the fact that the first five weeks of the course uh, were simple to follow not very difficult uh, but fifth week onwards it becomes uh, <clears throat> a bit more difficult and um, some tips about online learning so see the first of all what what uh, i would say is that it is a mode of uh, learning by yourself it is a mode of autonomous learning that you are actually doing which is which is great which is um, um, which requires also a lot of um application on your part and i i i truly appreciate that um what i can say you are quite right after the fifth week i mean yes uh, once we start moving on from simple sentences to slightly more complex structures within <clears throat> the language then you have to have a cumulative um memory of what has been learned so for example when we begin with week number 6 uh, we have to ensure that week 1 to week 5 is truly processed and digested uh, by us and it becomes part of our vocabulary it becomes part of our knowledge of the of grammar etc so um, I can only say that uh, even not only online, even offline, or even uh, when you learn as a as a proper uh, course in a classroom with a teacher present and you know three lectures a, a week or four lectures a week or whatever, even then I always say that it is absolutely essential to spend half an hour a day, whether you have a lecture or not, whether you have finished your homework assignment or not, it is absolutely vital. To spend half an hour a day doing anything in that language. I mean, you can you can take your textbook and read some passages. You can take some other book and try and read something. Um, <clears throat> uh, but usually, it is better to stick to things that you can understand. So that's why I'm saying textbook. Um, it is very important to also read things aloud. It is you can um, if you have the possibility, then just um, go to the terrace or go to the balcony or um, or take your textbook and read something aloud and see how it sounds try and get fluency in 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 reading things uh, that is what will allow the language to actually <clears throat> settle inside your mind is what i would say yeah and uh, then you might find uh, otherwise tip for online learning i would say just be in touch with the language on an absolutely regular basis which means whether you have a lecture or not whether you have done the assignment or not every day spend half an hour with the language and <clears throat> that is uh, that is right because we don't realize that when we are learning a new language actually a lot of new knowledge is getting imprinted on the brain and if it if it's not practice if the pattern is not set by practicing every day it is very it gets very easily erased you know so do that and see uh, then the next question I'm, i have to hurry up a little bit because we have to uh, this thank you of questions wow okay <clears throat> i'm an engineering student i'm uh,
so uh, tips to prepare for the exam um, uh, is the next question uh, uh, due to lack of time but i'm sorry but, uh, you have to make time for going through the lectures and see the thing is that i when when it comes to learning a language i can or shashirika can or any textbook or any course can only teach you so much the internalizing of the language has to happen from happen with you i mean you have to internalize the language we can only give you uh, assignments practice sessions explain concepts grammar or uh, tell you how to practice or tell you how to learn but the learning which will mean the internalization of the language that has to that has to be happen from you it's come from you and so uh, you have to make some time and don't i would say don't put too much pressure on on yourself uh, in the sense that if it is if if your other studies are getting in the way um, you can give time to those studies you can uh, because anyways the nptel courses are always there online and you can do it at, at your pace later on also um so um find some time because as i said uh, the learning can be done whatever tips i mean I, i've given you so many tips right now about dative verbs about uh, learning vocabulary etc now i can only say these things i cannot do it for you that is unfortunately i mean i wish i could but i cannot okay so uh, take it easy find time and uh, set your priorities i mean if uh, if you're since you're st studying engineering right now i'm sure that there must be a lot of work a uh, lot of studies so give it time make sure that your studies engineering whichever other subject or field you might be studying make sure that you have under control all that you need to do and then uh, then find some time to devote to german course um, that those priorities you have to set and uh, i hope you can uh, make that time uh, first name and surname okay i'm moving on to the next question <clears throat> for how to identify the first name and surname from a given name um yeah good question usually um in german the name for example if you say boris becker so boris becker or uh, the way we say Henry Ford or I don't know um, Mike Atherton or whoever. So you you while saying the name you say the name first and surname afterwards. In German surnames are usually mostly if not always family names. Like several um, cases in India as well. I mean in India it is not in Indian. naming system is actually much more complex and much more uh, diverse than german german basically first name or name means a uh, name actually name means your surname in german mostly okay <clears throat> but uh, um, it's a given name and a surname given name surname for example if i am milin brahme then milin is my given name brahme is my family name uh, and so on and so forth so uh, Boris Becker Becker is a family name his father also must have been something Becker and the grandfather something Becker and so on and so forth so it's um, and Boris is the given name um i would say practice is the only way and and uh, coming across enriching our vocabulary and coming across as many names as possible is the only way to actually identify the first name and, and uh, from a given name or uh, surname okay first name and surname <clears throat> um in formal documents usually that is important i mean if you are listening to this uh, in formal documents name name implies family name or surname and for name implies given name or first name okay now this again leads to complications especially uh, in in uh, south india um i mean because you have uh, the given name actually is the main name you know so um I, whereas 
the surname can be the name of the village where you come from it can be your father's name or whatever there are so many different variations that we have so actually indian naming system is much more complex to understand than the german german is very simple your given name and surname is family name okay so um, don't worry about the german naming system it is uh, all you need to know is um, different variations different uh, names that's all the naming system is as such is quite simple uh, easily understand the articles of a noun as i said learn by heart model the final paper i have already replied that i hope you have heard and understood uh, final exam again same uh, how much german language level i think uh, in our course description we have described in quite detail what you should be able to do if you complete the a1 german 1 course well what all you should be able to do this is remember this is the first level in uh, in all the european languages there is a uh, there is a common european framework for languages which identifies six levels of language learning okay and so a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 c2 is the highest level that you can uh, go up to while learning in this pattern then there are other qualifications after that so um, this is the very first level a1 and uh, you go back to the course description and you will find um, what you can achieve by doing this course you can even google the uh, common framework of languages or european common framework of languages and you will there's a very good wiki article and there are several articles on, on it they will tell you what this level a1 level which we which is our objective in this course <clears throat> what it means okay i have to uh, go a little quicker then um, attend classes regularly um, please uh, mention the lesson number and page number of chapter you are going to teach thank you okay um fine uh, what what i can say is that um, i think it will um we will go back to the videos and see what we can do about this with uh, where uh, mostly if you listen to the lectures you will realize that i am before i begin any exercise from the textbook or the workbook i usually um say which page we are on in the textbook okay so if you listen carefully you will actually get the page number okay so for example if we are on page 27 and doing some exercise i will say zeit is even in swansish uh übung or aufgabe 2 aufgabe 6 whatever it is so those those bits are there in the lectures uh if if you didn't find them in any of the lectures you can please identify them or um, if we also we will also uh, go through that once and if we find that if i'm if i'm dealing with a lesson in the textbook or a particular um section in the textbook and i have not said which page we are on then we we will take a look at that okay um so but usually i think if my memory serves me right in 99% of the lectures or 99% of the cases where we are dealing with things from the textbook at the beginning of that section i would have said zeiter zone zone page number this and this okay um but as i said if it's not there we will i will look it into it look into it again uh then send <clears throat> assignment regularly hence not used for the exam but want to complete the course when can register for it in future uh the course will be offered again um in january again it will be offered you can register then if you have not been able not found time to send in assignments regularly then um please register for it again uh, in january uh, but please make sure that you send in at least eight assignments because that is the qualifying mark to be able to write the exam and that you do them well because we also have a qualifying mark of 40% of marks in the assignments in the eight best assignments um so no problem every every year the course at least for the next couple of years every year the course will be offered twice once in january and once in july so you can register for it if you have not had time this time okay 
uh, assignment questions would be in exam i have said that the exam questions will be on similar pattern okay so um, assignment questions meaning uh, whether you want me to repeat the same questions in the exam well i will see if it can, can be done but i don't think so but the pattern will be similar um uh, the next question is in almost every week's final assignments we are being asked questions that are not taught in the videos of that week and a part of syllabi of the next week how are you supposed to answer these questions um well i if you can point out specific instances of uh, questions that are asked which were not taught in the videos of that week i will respond to it because i don't have the uh, all the assignments in front of me right now and uh, neither do i have access to the videos right now here but uh, that usually should not happen because uh, the assignments are based on the topics covered during that week so if you have found an instance of something that is not been covered earlier um in the previous weeks uh, and in fact is only covered in the week following the assignment then please point it out i will definitely have a look at it and if it is like that we will correct it okay <clears throat> uh sometimes ears inked are with capital letter in between sentence um, and not zinked uh, ear can be uh, question is sometimes ear and zinked are with capital letter in between in, in the middle of sentence etc see not not zinked uh, zinc would be capital uh, only if it is the first word of the sentence but ear i h r ear now that is a mm, that is the formal uh, possessive of the big z the big z is the z that you write with a with the capital s always and it it is a formal u respectful formal u the way we have something like aap in german uh, sorry in hindi <clears throat> we don't have an equivalent for that in english in english there is only one word you it means one person 100 people it means formal informal etc just one word you but if you for all those who understand even elementary hindi um you have tu tum aap at least three words for you depending on the level of formality level of informality etc german has two do and z do for one person informal z for one or many people formal and this z is written with a capital s that is how it is identified now ear i h r ear with a capital i is also the possessive of this z which is your aapka naam kya hai aapka naam aap aapka that is the possessive so z ear we is ear naam now this when you asking someone formally we is ear naam this ear i h r is actually the formal your which um is like aapka naam okay and since it is connected with the formal z which we always write with a capital s this ear also always will be written with a capital i okay and it is that way that we also identify it as your formal okay then uh, when we have to use definite and indefinite article um well <clears throat> very simple rule when <clears throat> whenever a noun a thing is referred to for the first time usually it is indefinite for example if you can if this video is um, on you can see me if i say what is this you would say it is a phone it is a phone indefinite that is ein handy or that is ein uh, smartphone whatever okay um, then i would say the phone belongs to me then the definite article comes in because now we know that we are referring to this specific definite article uh thing and that is why then we use the in english so this is a phone indefinite any phone there can be 10 other phones here this is also a phone but the phone this phone 
I'm specific about this phone. The phone belongs to me. Okay. So that is the same thing happens in German as well. Usually, whenever we refer to a, to something for the first time, it is indefinite. And then once we know what it is, it is definite because we know what it is. It's definite. Um, there is uh, in the very first lesson, if I'm not mistaken, if you go back to the first lesson or at the most in the second, but in one of the two lessons, there is actually uh, there are a couple of uh, <clears throat> tasks sections on this. Das ist ein Hotel, for example, das Hotel heist, the name of the hotel is etc. So just go back to that and have a look, then you will realize and I, I hope this also has made it clear. Uh, then there is um, double S instead of uh, the beta sign. Yes, you can for all our purposes, we are allowing double S instead of beta. We will not go into that right now. Um, Lectures with special attention given basic grammar usage and the so English to German translation rather than the other way around. I mean, the use could be based in history. Okay. Um, can relate to life in an Indian context. So it helps doing simple conversations for day to day. So uh, this is always a this is always a very, very the, the question is the examples to be used could be based on situations that can that we can relate to to from life in an Indian context so that it helps in doing simple conversations needed for day-to-day -day activities. Now, the, the thing is, uh, learning a foreign language in uh, your native country is, is a very interesting proposition, actually, because you do not have, apart from, let's say, going to the Goethe Institute and spending time there where lots of people speak German, or going to some place like the Center of German Studies in JNU, where I studied, uh, where all the classes that are held are held in German. There is, there is no class in English. The classroom language is German. So there, of course, you have a, a peculiar instance of uh, a German speaking environment in an Indian setting or an Indian reality. But otherwise, um, we hardly come across any Indian context or any Indian reality as such where you might have to learn or uh, uh, might have to speak German. So. Uh, so this becomes, I understand it. I, I know what you mean that you can relate to. In fact, there have been a lot of experiments about this. If you go, if you look at, for example, I would suggest it should be online. Go to the uh, Maharashtra government's uh, educational department's website. I hope as the Tamil Nadu government does, I hope they also have all the textbooks online, PDFs. That's a great thing. I mean, if the Tamil Nadu government has actually all the, the PDFs of all the books. I, I think so does the NCERT. Um, so try and find the German textbook that is used in the Maharashtra board schools. Because it's a very interesting book. It has been produced, uh, uh, has been produced in cooperation by Germans and Indians together. It has a lot of um, references from uh, an Indian child's school life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can you can take a look at that. I mean, I, I know uh, even in the 1980s, for example, uh, there was a book that came uh, called Leonsi Deutsch. Uh, I, I have learned from that book, and there have been attempts to bring in Indian names and things like that into textbooks. But uh, usually, for me, what happens is I believe that learning a foreign language is an encounter with a foreign world. It's an encounter with a foreign reality, and uh, and we need to we need to use the potential to actually uh, get a little distance from ourselves and look at something different. That is for me a very important activity. As well. I mean, I I of course I should be able to tell a German tourist uh, a thing or two about the Qutub Minar in German, for example, or about the Jama Masjid in Delhi or um, the Baha'i Temple. Etc. Etc. I should be able to do that. That there's no doubt. So I need some vocabulary about uh, the Mughal rule, about the Baha'is and uh, the, the Baha'i Temple, or um, uh, or um, things like that. But <clears throat> in general, I think um, what I would say is that um, learning a foreign language is our first encounter with a foreign world with the foreignness of the foreign world and that is very important i think 
so but this is a this is a, a question that i cannot really answer in even while teaching i can't answer this because it is a question of research in german language learning in foreign language learning in fact whether it is uh, better to uh, recontextualize a foreign language into a target culture etc so a lot of things are there and experiments have been done with that um and yes i mean there are people who who like it there are people who uh, feel that the other way is good etc but um yeah we will um english to german translation <clears throat> it happens willy nilly okay i mean when we when we're learning a language when you try and formulate uh, in the beginning sentences in german we will basically be subconsciously doing an english to german translation or a marathi to german or telugu to german whatever our language of thinking is that we will be doing so um <clears throat> uh okay how to express in simple sentences of course uh, at this stage okay thank you i hope i have answered the question interesting question okay how to use the modal verbs uh modal verbs learn their learn their meanings learn their conjugations and just understand that when we use a modal verb the other verb which is called the main verb actually that will not be conjugated and that will go to the end of the sentence simple these are three or four uh, rules of thumb that you need while uh, using modal verbs but you should know the, the the meanings you should know the meaning of müssen must what is the meaning of must in english can shall should uh, will um uh, want to, to would like to what are the meanings of these words you should know in, in german that möchte will kann muss müssen sollen etc and then just apply this very simple grammatical structure rule that the modal verb is conjugated it is there in the second in, in the place where the verb usually is and the main verb is not conjugated put at the end of the sentence that's all then uh, can you please take a separate class for separable verbs i already answered that what is it about separable verbs that is not clear please identify that actually it helps if you if you try to identify what exactly your doubt is the doubt might actually disappear you might not have a doubt it it is not um, it's not uh, something crazy but if we start identifying the problem as to what is it that i don't understand in this we realize that no there is nothing actually i understand okay and then you have to practice it that's that's the way so um, if i take a class for separable verbs again then you might again come back with the same doubts rather than you going into it is better you go into whatever classes there are already online and go into it carefully go into it carefully and identify sorry but sir this is the point at which i can't understand what you're saying so please explain this to me then it is also possible for me to actually see whether i have expressed myself clearly in the class if there really is a doubt or what i can do to solve the doubt etc otherwise taking a class for separable verbs i might make the same mistakes again i might overlook some aspects again and you might again come back to me with the same thing so please uh, all those who ask me to take separate classes for different topics i am now uh, trying to summarize many questions here please go back to those specific lectures in which these topics are dealt with and identify what the problem is okay and then come back on the forum or in the next session and we will definitely get it go into it um so simple daily usual words we will deal that you have to learn then uh, how can we manage all the classes cases with articles and prepositions is there is some simple so the question is about uh, nominative accusative dative cases with articles <clears throat> uh the question is here um is it a simplified so um, we will <clears throat> we have time okay is there another class another live session yes, sir so 5 10 minutes we go yeah so actually our time is up but i am here another 5 10 minutes so if you if those who are listening can um um articles and prepositions i think about the articles and the pronouns also uh, in 
a couple of lectures we have actually made tabular uh, these things uh, tables with uh, masculine feminine neuter and nominative accusative dative singular plural and so on so so you can you can if you find i find it very useful because in the beginning stage i am a firm believer that in the beginning stage uh, a little bit of not a little bit but plenty of learning by heart is very important i i have learned it that way when i learned german and uh, but it's not but that's not the only reason why i <laughs> i subscribe to the view i think it is very important to to automatically get some responses from your mind in german and for that you have to uh, like we learn our nursery rhymes by heart uh, we have to learn certain things by heart so if you find it useful uh, you make those tables and then uh, keep them with you uh, not during the exam <laughs> it is not an open book but keep them with you and have a look at them every now and then as to and try and make sentences in each of the different cases that are there in the table um uh, then one question is about what is the importance of german in our daily life well we will we can have a webinar on that in fact uh, shashi rekha my colleague recently did a webinar for a very <laughs> reputed college in in chennai on exactly this question but it was an entire webinar on the importance of german in our daily life okay our student life so um how and where to find out correct answers for activities um arbeitsbuch and expect german please be know this because yeah okay <clears throat> so if you haven't yet found the answers uh, to the questions in the arbeits book we will put it on the forum don't worry about that okay uh, because the key to the arbeits book questions is there and uh, how to find it where to find it etc i will make a note of it and we'll put it on the forum so the question about answers to answers for the activities of arbeits book uh, we will answer on the forum um then um, will it be every day can we do it uh, as i understand this question number 25 uh, you mean the lectures are released every week you can you can watch them listen to them at your convenience and try and do the assignment within the deadline that's the only thing that you can do uh, use of mögen and mögen is dependent on uh, <clears throat> what he like would like how to decide ha ah, so this this is a question about difference between mögen and möchte now mögen is to like that is uh, for example uh, ich mag mögen sie mögen sie die deutsche sprache do you like the german language you are learning german do you like german ich mag i like ich mag die deutsche sprache i like the german language ich mag mögen okay <clears throat> uh but möchte is uh möchten sie deutsch lernen would you like to learn german you might like it you might not like it you might like french better than german whatever that is okay that is liking it but what would you like to learn möchten sie deutsch lernen oder möchten sie französisch lernen what is it that you would like to read uh, to learn so uh if you want to say that i like something uh, then use mögen if you want to say i would like to do something or i would like to have something then ich mag you can say ich mag kaffee ich mag mögen sie kaffee mögen do you like coffee or do you like tea what is your preference do you like coffee do you like tea there you mögen but if you are offering somebody coffee or tea would you like to have coffee would you like some coffee then you say möchten sie kaffee möchten sie tea okay so that is the difference i hope it is clear um what is dif what differentiates german from other european languages are there cultural structures in germany that are affected by their language by how the language works this is a very philosophical question and uh, um yeah i mean i i can differentiate german from other european languages i am not competent enough i can contrast german and english these two languages i know fairly well and i can contrast german and english as two european languages uh, although english i don't know whether you can call it a european language um, 
only. I mean, um, but uh, apart from that, Spanish, French, Italian, Czech, I'm not conversant with those languages or Danish um, or, or Swedish, etc. So I, I can't really say. Um, are, are there cultural structures in Germany that affected? Well, that's a that's a question that cannot really be answered in a session like this. Yeah, um, there are at least, I mean, I think we are, we've gone through only half the questions till now, and we've already overshot time by six minutes. So um, how do we, how do we address this? Um, is Karthik, are you online? Karthik? Yeah, uh, we have already overshot time by seven minutes. And uh, we have, I mean, I've addressed only half the questions till now. So, um, uh, how many people are still logged in? Okay. Um, so I, I, I would suggest because uh, this will go on. I, I'll take another four or five questions, and then uh, we will continue with the same Google Doc for people to log questions for the next session. Is that okay? And then uh, what we'll do is uh, we will uh, we'll put a marker on the question which uh, at which we stop today, and we'll take it take it from there for the next session. Yeah. Okay. So um, where do we go here? Uh, no, no. Where is the question? Here. So, So I will uh, I will take another three or four questions and then we have to stop. Um, so I just said about the cultural structures in Germany. I think we cannot answer the question in this session. It is it is a topic for a wider and longer discussion. Um, then the next question is I would like to ask how uh, how do I stick with German language better understanding and learn fast and how long does it take to reach up to B2 level? Okay. B2 level, that I can answer very simply. B2 level means four courses, depending on whether you're doing an intensive course, like the uh, shorter intensive courses at the Goethe Institute, or whether you're doing um, the NPTEL type course, it will take up to B2 level, it can take you between one and two years, definitely. If you do intensive, intensive courses, that is you actually do four and a half to five hours of language classes every day for five days a week, th that intensive it is. And those are about eight week courses in the Goethe Institute. Even then that eight weeks means two months for one course, which means with a gap in between four courses, A1, A2, B1, B2, eight months plus four months of gap in between one, one each, it, it will take you minimum one year up to two years easily if you are doing it uh, consistently also. Okay, that is the amount of time it will take to reach B2 level. If you, we are planning to introduce B1 level to NPTEL also, uh, hopefully uh, very soon. But uh, if you go via the NPTEL way, then uh, NPTEL is a 12 week course. So you'll have uh, one semester of A1, one semester of A2, and then one semester of B1, that's one and a half years. And then you can do a B2 um, with the Goethe Institute, which is um, again, two years to take. Only thing is that uh, up to the B1 level with through NPTEL, you will be able to learn uh, free, of charge, free of cost. Okay, so um, that is, I hope it answers your question. 
Ne, where are we now? Uh, B2 level, then 29 is not applicable. 30th is, uh, 30th is in the sentence, unsere Wohnung hat vier Zimmer, eine Küche, ein Bad, einen, einen Flur und einen Balkon. Why are first two objects with ein, eine, and last two with einem, einen? Okay, the last two are with not, einem is not correct, M for Mumbai, M is not correct. It should be N, N for Nagpur, both of them. And they are einen because they are masculine and they are unsere Wohnung hat, our apartment has, and they are accusative objects. And that's why they are einen Flur und einen Balkon. Ein Bad, it's ein because it's das Bad, it is um, neuter. And so in, in neuter objects, the ein remains ein, even when it is an object. Uh, and Küche, eine Küche, die Küche. Uh, is actually uh, feminine and that's why the indefinite article is Aina. So, uh, to wrap up, Aina Kyusha, these Kyusha, Bad, Fluor, Balcon, Zimmer, all these nouns in the sentence are objects, are accusative objects. We have done that uh, in, the, in a previous question. Now, the accusative form for feminine is D and Aina. For neuter, it is das and ein. And for masculine, it is den, n for Nagpur, and einen, again, n for Nalanda. Okay, so, unsere um, Wohnung hat vier Zimmer, eine Küche, ein Bad, einen Flur und einen Balkon. These are einen because they are accusative. What you're asking is basically the accusative forms. Accusative forms of decusha, das bad, der flur, and der balkon are different. And that if you go back to the accusative forms, you'll find it is einer, ein, and einen. That is why they are so. Next is, can you please suggest some elementary German books to read to get a better grasp of, on the language? Um, yeah, maybe we can put this on the forum. If there are some books to read, elementary German books to read. Mm. We can put this question on the forum and then I will identify it there. Then uh, distinction issues in gender, plural form, positive articles are unclear. Also accusative and dative forms. So I've answered most of these questions just now. Accusative and dative forms, we have, we have uh, quickly had a, had a look. Plural forms, you have to learn by heart. There is no gender also has to learn this. Actually, the very, very first question, I think I clarified this. Uh, positive articles are not clear. Uh, again, what is not clear? Because the the possessive articles themselves, we have to know, we have to learn them. When when, when I say ish and I say mine, nama, ist, so and so, mine is the possessive form of ish. This I have to know, I have to learn that ish, mine. B is dein, name. what is your name? So do dine. This particular uh, association we have to learn by heart. Ich mein, do dine, er sein, sie ihr, wir unser, and so on and so forth. So uh, this is, uh, and then they, they function the way ein, eine, einen function. That is simple. Then there is no question. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, question 34, 35, um, 35, um, correction, uh, correction is says, says oil should be capital in the middle of sentence, not noun. Okay, we'll look into this, uh, this uh, question 21, assignment 7, uh, Maria, uh, Mary has a question, we'll, we can look into it. Then uh, the lecture on prepositions was really short, it would be great if you could cover that again. Now, I, as I said, please go back to the lecture and if you can identify what it is that you didn't understand. Go back to the lecture, go back to the textbook and the workbook, and then identify what you didn't understand. Then we'll come back to it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so I think we will um, stop with question number 35. Uh, if we can highlight question 35 and keep so we know that we begin with question 36 and go from there in the next session. So can we uh, end the session now, Karthik? Yeah, so it is already uh, 7.15 and uh, I think other sessions are also lined up. So I will uh, I will say goodbye. Um, I will 
I just want to um, say thank you for joining the live session. Uh, once again, where, where is the, this thing? The, where are the students? Uh, this, 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 this one. No, this side. Ah. Okay. Huh? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, um, for all those who have joined, uh, thank you for joining this session. I hope it was useful. And uh, we will come back to another live session next week. Um, and we'll take. Uh, continue with the same set of questions that are that have been asked. Uh, so, vielen Dank, vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit, vielen Dank für die Fragen. Und uh, wir treffen uns bald. Wir treffen uns nächste Woche. Um, und uh, ich sage jetzt einfach auf Wiedersehen und einen schönen Abend und bis zum nächsten Mal. Ja, auf Wiedersehen. Ich kann Teil los, ne? Ja, Kartik, wir können. Wind up. I'm done.